Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alexis, and today we have the next episode of Ask a Trans Woman, the series where I take your questions and answer them, whether it's about being trans, current political issues, pop culture, whatever comes my way, I answer it. I've even started answering questions in person, as you'll find out in this video. So let's get started. What is the name of your favorite lip color? Okay, and I'm wearing it right now, so that's perfect. So I've talked a lot about my love for Morphe products. Uh, I go there a lot. I actually went there today. So I stopped by to see if there was anything on sale, and there was. I was very excited about that. But to answer the question, my favorite, the name of my favorite lip color, the one that has become my signature red, it's actually called Morphe. It is Morphe's signature red. It has become my signature color, which is why I'm very loyal to that particular brand. What is your favorite type of music? You know, that changes depending on the day, my favorite type of music. But if I'm gonna have to pick an overall genre, and I actually, I remember filling this out in my like get to know you questionnaire at work. My favorite, I, I'd say my favorite genre right now, or just, just in general, is pop punk. I'm a huge Fall Out Boy fan, so that's become kind of my go-to when I'm really feeling down. What is your favorite musical artist? It's funny. I just said I'm a huge Fall Out Boy fan, and but they're not my number one. I don't. I think it's off camera, but right above my head, I have a few Funko Pops. One is uh, Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy. I have Steven Tyler and Joe Perry from Aerosmith, and I have like the album cover of Linkin Park. I'd honestly say Linkin Park is probably the band I'm most emotionally connected to. It really speaks to me. But overall, my favorite artist is actually a semi-local band uh, from Chicago where I grew up who they were first starting to break through more so on local radio, but Chicago has a pretty big radio market. The band is called Lucky Boys Confusion. And I was actually really fortunate. The only time I've seen them in concert was here in Orlando. I, I absolutely love the band. They just also happened to drop a new album right as my divorce started happening. And so they've kind of become connected to my life in another way in that that album, which was their first album in, I want to say, almost 10 years. It, it was really meaningful to have that piece to help me get through a very difficult time in my life. What's your favorite video game? Right in, the feels. Feels. right in the feels. <laughs> kind of for a similar reason, Breath of the Wild got me through the beginning of my divorce. The Switch coming out, I had pre-ordered it, and because of kind of the contentious nature of the divorce, I wasn't, I, frankly, I didn't know that my wife at the time uh, was going to go pick up the pre-order and give it to the kid. Not that I would have, didn't want my kid to have a Switch, but like, they were impossible to come by and I had nothing to do so like I didn't even have my game systems at the time I went and made sure I picked up the switch when it came that when it came out and Breath of the Wild was one of the only games that I, I think was the only game I bought actually it was one of the only games available but it's also one of the best games ever made it is it is tr a truly brilliant experience from start to finish and I really don't have a single bad thing to say about it other than the Champion's Path DLC, one of the dungeons was so damn hard that I got stuck. And then my Switch was stolen, so I've never finished it. Sounds like you need to start over. Yeah, I am going to be starting over, and it's going to be a game that we stream. So, there you go. <laughs> I gotta play Pokemon first. Yes, you do. Mm. Okay, what's your favorite way to cheer yourself up? Okay, I do remember seeing this question, and I really like this one. What is my favorite way to cheer myself up? What I absolutely love to do is just to go and walk around, like whether it's a Disney park, Disney Springs, the mall, even Walmart. I just like to go and walk around with my wife and just talk out whatever I'm dealing with. I just need to be somewhat 
not that I'm like trying to be physically active, but the actual just act of like walking around, it really helps me clear my head. Um, and it, what's weird is like when I'm really stressed out at work, walking away does help. But like if I do go to like walk, do like a lap around the building to de-stress, it actually makes it worse for me because I'm like right there in the moment. I need to like leave the space entirely. So that's that's really what I like to do to, to relax and to, to calm down and kind of get my head right. If you were a sea creature, what would you be? Ooh, if I was a sea creature, okay. I almost gave this answer away, like right away. <laughs> Cause this was, a, I think it was a Twitter question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dolphin. Dolphins are basically the most intelligent animal on the planet outside of humans. And depending on the human, dolphins are more intelligent. They have an advanced form of communication compared to other animals. And let's just be real, they have sex for pleasure. They do. It's It's been documented at this point. So they're, they're pretty damn cool. What is one tip you would give a person just starting their transition? <sighs> See, now this is why we went through the questions fast because this is, these, are, these later ones are going to take a We're getting while. to the good stuff. This is the good stuff. So what's one tip I would offer someone who's just starting their transition? Apart from having a good therapist, because I've talked about that before. Practice your patience. Practicing your patience is the most important factor uh, at the beginning of your transition. Because I made, the, I made it as a joke because I'd seen it so many times and I knew I was joking that like the f the second day that I was on HRT, so March 22nd, 2021, um, I think I tweeted, okay, where are my boobs? Because that's the running, the, the running joke is that like as soon as you start HRT, you think they just like blow up like balloons and clearly they don't. And I, I, it's actually funny because I've had, I had a doctor's appointment today. So I am just making some changes to my HRT regimen and things like that. And that's really what the message is. This is a, you know, a second puberty. You remember what puberty was like the first time you went through it, probably. You're probably trying to forget it, and I don't blame you. It's going to take time. And that is the hardest thing to adjust to. You're going to go through a lot of physical changes. You're going to go through a lot of emotional changes. And they're not going to go as fast as you want them to. So just understand that it's going to take time. And you may not get to where you want to be as fast, not only just as fast as you want to go, but possibly ever, with at least without surgical intervention. That being said, don't rush to surgery. Give the hormones time. Because if you give it time, it gets a lot cheaper. Like, what you see here, zero surgeries, the only cosmetic procedure I've had is laser hair removal. This is all natural. I mean, this is a padded bra, like it's a push-up bra, but that's about it. If you're willing to be patient and you follow, you you know, follow me proper medical advice, not just like what some random trans woman says on Reddit, you'll get there. Or at least most of the way there. Is it normal for when you first start taking HRT for your chest to hurt? So is it normal for your boobs to hurt? when you first start HRT. Yes, it is perfectly normal. It is nothing to be scared of. When your boobs start to hurt, but it's in, now if it's like a sharp pain and you're like, uh, like that's different, like call a doctor. But like that kind of dull, like soreness, almost achiness, that means they're growing. That's a good thing. It's, it's, you know, the the running, another one of those, like, early jokes that you'll see a lot for people that are early in transition is like, oh my god, my boobs hurt. Uh, oh my god, my boobs hurt! Yay! Because it's like, it, the light goes on. That means they're growing. That means that the cells are developing, every, the breasts are forming. That's a really important moment. And it, coincidentally enough, 
having recently gone through this, like about a year ago now, once my daughter started going through her puberty, I was able to relate to her in a way that I never had before. We were able to share that moment of like, oh, I actually do know what you're going through. And relatively recently. Hers, is, as it's gone on, is, has been a very slow process, well, even slower than mine. Whereas my other daughter has like sprouted like a weed and it's weird. She looks like she's 16. And they're only six months apart. So it, everyone is different. So how soon in that process you start to feel it will be different for you than it was for me than it is for the you know random trans woman on Reddit. There is no direct timeline because every person's genetics are different. Just keep that in mind. You will feel it. It's going to be weird. You're going to be like, oh, why does this is really sensitive and sore? That's a good thing. Unless it's a sharp pain, like, you know, like you're being stabbed, then you want to see a doctor. How do you feel about trying out progesterone? <laughs> oh, God. This is a Lindsay question. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, I had a doctor's appointment today. And one of the changes that I, we are making to my HRT regimen is I'm going to be trying progesterone. Now, I'm, gl I'm actually glad that we're talking about this because it's a question I see a lot. Not directed at me for Ask a Trans Woman, but just in general. People talk about progesterone a lot. My doctor, who, who inc coincidentally, I've talked about my doctors before. My doctor, or in this case, it's actually a nurse practitioner. I was corrected today, so... My nurse practitioner is a new, uh, a new provider. Same location, but I, my previous provider is no longer with the practice. I'm now actually seeing the person who runs the whole show. So, uh, my provider, uh, his name is Joey. He's been doing. He is a specialist in trans medicine and has helped over ten thousand people transition. He knows what he's talking about. So. When he tells me progesterone is not the magic pill the internet thinks it is, I believe him. What it's going to, it's not going to make my, it's not going to make my breasts change in size. It's not going to speed things up. I know that. I accept that. What it is going to help me with, and this is kind of the main reason, is it's going to help round things out and that's the main reason i want to take it and it's it's also it's a temporary thing progesterone is not the magic is not going to magically fix things you will possibly see a boost but that boost may also come from your you may have hit the because i'm in this situation right now he called it the donut hole of transition where you kind of get stuck in this like empty center period where it feels like you've hit a wall with just estrogen and that's normal. Every per the length of that period is different for everyone. And so my hope is I will start to see some reshaping in a way that makes me feel better about the fact that my progress is slow, but that's different for everyone. And so you may, if I, and we've also upped my, my estrogen so i may see a bump and even he joey explicitly said like you're probably gonna see some growth now and it's going to be because of the estrogen but you'll think it's because of the progesterone because i know that's what everybody thinks i was like no i believe you it's going to be the estrogen you know we'll see just how much but i'm excited about it i'm a little bit scared because if it doesn't go well, if it messes with my emotions too much, I'm gonna turn and look at Lindsay here. If it messes with my emotions too much and it will happen quickly if it does, I'm not going to keep taking it. it it's, it's just not a risk worth taking because it's not really doing anything. It's not, that's why it's not a, you know, an immediate thing that you start taking for most people. You don't need it. What progesterone is going to do, what, the way it was described to me, is it is, it's effectively going to be a simulated pregnancy. 
that's why you don't take it all the time because pregnancies only last about nine or ten months. Long story short, it's not the magic pill you think it is or what the internet has told you to believe. It may work well for you, but it also doesn't do a damn thing for a lot of people. So I'm excited to try it, but I also know it's not magic. Okay, last question. It's a doozy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This, this one you got asked in person yes. at the comic book store of all places. Yeah, so let's 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 add some context here. Add context before I uh, ask the question. I had a lovely conversation with a let's just be honest here, a Trump supporting woman while I was in line at a at my local comic book store for an event. She was very nice. She was a, very kind to my daughter, um, and she was just in the literal sense of the word, ignorant. She wanted to learn. It was like I was doing this entire show in person. And this particular question, I've not been asked it yet, but I've wanted to have to say a bit about it. Does Leah Thomas have an advantage over cisgendered swimmers? The short answer is no. And that may seem like an obvious biased answer because you're asking a trans woman. I have personal experience in this particular field. I was a competitive swimmer going all the way through the early part of my high school life uh, until an injury ended my career. I was a butterflyer and a sprint. Basically, I was a sprinter. Uh, short butterfly and freestyle. I was good. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I was good. I was a freshman swimming at the varsity level. No. I wasn't winning state, but I was on track too. And then an injury destroyed my career. I tore both my rotator cuffs, so I know what it's like to have an injury reduce your strength. What HRT does to your body is an entirely different level. Losing the testosterone that fuels your muscles destroys your ability to perform at the highest level that men do. Let's, let's just be real from a physicality standpoint. There is a difference between a high-end, like elite-tier male athlete, like say a Michael Phelps at his peak, and an elite-tier athlete female athlete like Katie Ledecky. Both are legendary swimmers. Legendary Olympians, some of the most decorated swimmers of all time. Leah Thomas didn't come close to Michael Phelps when she was competing with the men. And she didn't come close to Katie Ledecky's records either, even in the same event. I'm not saying Leah Thomas isn't a great swimmer. She is. She absolutely is. But her times actually like even out she's on par with the same female swimmers of her age group but she's not even like the dominant swimmer there are other swimmers at that event that set a li um i don't know if there were world records set but there are at least ncaa records set one swimmer set 18 of them do you know how many records Leah Thomas set in that event? The, 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 the entire meet, not just the 500 free that she won. Zero. She didn't even sniff Katie Ledecky's record. And I know it's easy to say, oh, well, you're a trans woman. You're biased. Check out the link in the description below. The Independent, a newspaper in England, you know, aka Turf Island, broke it all down. She does not have a competitive advantage. Her times don't indicate it, and just frankly, having personal experience in the matter, what HRT does to your body, it's just not possible. And that's what I had to impart on this woman that I met at the comic book store. And she struggled to believe me because she wanted to kept she wanted to find the excuse, saying like, "Oh, well, how long has she transitioned? She missed an entire season." I tried to come back too. 
I was never the same. And I, I didn't have the surgery and that was ultimately made, made my path more difficult. It was abundantly clear that I wasn't going to be the same. I've never been the same physically after my injury. And then you took away testosterone. I used to not be able to lift very much because again, because of my injury. Now I struggle to lift like 10 pounds. That's how much 15, now almost 16 months of HRT has impacted my physicality. When we go to, when we go shopping, the kids, whenever we walk by the sporting goods aisle where they have like, you know, like the at home weights that you can buy the little like barbells, my kids love to see, my kids like to see like which ones can they pick up. Picking up anything other than like a 10 or 15 pound weight is a struggle for me. Like I can lift it as long as I don't have to extend. Once I try to extend like beyond about here, I strain. And then my kids laugh at me and my wife just like looks embarrassed because like what the hell happened to this person that I married physically? I'm a weakling. It's why I need to start exercising because I need to rebuild that strength. So now I want you to think about Leah Thomas took a an entire year off of competitive swimming. I'm sure she still practiced in the pool, but she was not allowed to compete. Not being able to compete, even for a few weeks, lowers your times. But to lose as much time as she did, she's never gonna get that back. And it was at the peak of her career. Do you think she wanted to do that? Because let's face it, she was probably going to be on the Olympic team. She had a good shot, at least, making the Olympic team as a guy. Why would she choose to, and risk everything for a, a fake competitive advantage? She just wouldn't. So no, Leah Thomas does not have a competitive advantage over cis women. And her times prove it. Link's in the description below. That's all the time we have today. That's all the questions we have. If you've got a question for next week, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Send it to me on Twitter, or apparently now, ask me in person if you see me out in public. Because why not? It might show up on the episode. I can promise I won't name names. I don't do that. So again, add them in the comments below, on Twitter, whatever. I take questions now in all forms. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow. Thank you, and of course, as always, have courage and be kind, especially to yourself.